Welcome to Catalyzing Innovations podcast series, where exceptional global innovators across sectors share best practices to maximize creativity and practical secrets for good implementation. Hi, everybody. Welcome. I'm so happy to have Sandy Greenberg here, who's co-founder and co-CEO of Terry and Sandy, an independent ad agency in New York City. Terry and Sandy won top honors in Ad Age's Small Agency of the Year Award in 2017, and it's now on Ad Age's A-list of standout agency. She found the agency with her long-term creative partner, Terry Meyer. Welcome, Sandy, and thank you so much for joining us. Hi, Michelle. So, Hi. So this is a very broad question, but generally, how do you try to innovate for your clients? What's your innovation philosophy? You know, well, I think at its heart, advertising is all about solving a problem or reaching an objective for for a client. So, of course, our goal is to solve this problem in the most original and innovative way we can. So uh, the brand stands out in a very cluttered environment, whether whether that be TV advertise, you know, TV advertising, online, outdoor, print, you know, there's just so much clutter that 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 consumers come in contact with that the whole point of innovation is to to stand out, to find fresh original ways to do that. So we start really by trying um, simply to uncover the the business challenge at hand for our brands. You know, believe it or not, sometimes clients come to us. And they haven't simply, you know, even identified what the real precise challenge or opportunity in the marketplace it is, you know, what, what, what the opportunity is in the marketplace. So, like, I'll give you an example of something recently that we worked on that I think is really an innovative approach uh, to a business challenge. One of our clients is uh, Barba's Men's Grooming Salon in Chelsea. It's a small salon. It's actually probably our smallest account. Um, but you know, when, when the COVID pandemic hit, Barba, not to mention every other you know, small business in, in New York, uh, was forced to shutter their doors and close for months starting in March. So you know, Barba's owner, whose name is Xavier Cruz, he was in a really serious um, you know, business situation, not only was he making no money, right? I mean, what a horrible thing. But he risked losing his clients during the months that the shop was going to be closed. You're in a service business. If you, if you lose track, you know, touch with your clients, they could go elsewhere in those months to come. So the challenge that we would identify is how could he maintain a relationship with his clients during lockdown so that when the shop could reopen, his appointment book would be full. So that's the business challenge. So before we could come up with an innovative idea, we had to crystallize that. So then what we did was we came up with this idea called Quarren Cuts Virtual Hair School. So the idea is that in March and April, the first you know, couple months of quarantine, Google searches for home, care, hair, home haircuts went up 400%. Everybody was cutting their own hair. They were cutting their wife's hair. They were cutting their brother's hair. And as you can imagine, there are a lot of botched haircuts. So our idea was that Xavier Cruz would do virtual, virtually coach people, his clients through Zoom haircuts. Hmm. So uh, yeah, so it enabled him to touch base with his clients, to have a little fun and to provide a really much needed service because of course people need to feel well groomed to feel confident. Right. So, um, so what happened is the idea hit really big. We started out with this video where he, Xavier took, um, so Billy Porter, Billy Porter is a, he won an Emmy, he won an, a Grammy. He won, he's won a ton of awards. He's a Broadway uh, actor, singer. And he was in our first video and basically Xavier coached uh, Billy Porter's husband, Adam Porter, through cutting, uh, cutting, his, cutting his hair. So Adam cut Billy's hair and Xavier walked him through it, told him how to do it, what supplies he needed. And then we put that video up and it, it, it went crazy. Um, it got picked up by Live with Kelly and Ryan and Access Hollywood and People, In Touch, Oprah. 
And so Xavier ended up going on and helping Ryan Seacrest cut his hair. So that's innovation. That's creativity. Great. That's, right? it's, I love it. I love it. No, it, it's so much fun. Everybody can relate to it. Um, it I think it's a fantastic idea. Super, super creative. So you're, you're being really responding in the moment to a um, new set of circumstances, but being flexible. Yeah, I think, you know, your word is innovation, right? Mm -hmm. Innovate. It's like your doors are closed for you don't know how long. How do you maintain a relationship with your client? You have to find innovative ways to solve that problem. So that's what creativity is. Right, right. That's asking the right question, starting with that. So how do you motivate and teach your team to innovate? I, I'm sure you're very careful about who you hire. And that's part of the screening process is that, you know, someone who already has some sense of how to do it. But, you know, your agency is very special. And how do you sort of translate or teach that way of thinking to your team? Yeah, you know, we, we say of our company that we're two founders and 55 entrepreneurs. So we really do try to hire people who are driven, talented, and, and have an entrepreneurial streak of making things happen. So our job um, is less to just, we motivate people, absolutely. But I think that the, 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 the part that's hard is advertising as a business is really difficult. Uh, we, we creative people, especially throw our heart and soul into our work. You know, and our clients often don't buy the work we believe in, uh, they, or they make ch lots of changes. So our ideas aren't even recognizable to us. So my job with Terry, as really co-chief creative officers of the company, is to always remind our teams that great work is still possible, and we're behind them every step of the way, and um, to bring a gust of optimism and positivity to every project. We also talk about a key piece of, um, you know, innovation, creativity is, is the word resilience. It's one of our favorite words because you will get knocked down in advertising uh, a million times. And, you know, you're going to not get knocked down in business. You're going to get knocked down in life many times, right? So what distinguishes the great from the good or the, yeah, the great from the good is the ability to come back even stronger. So we really do encourage a spirit, a spirit of resilience. That's great. So, so in, in other words, resilience in terms of dealing with clients, I've been on the agency side and the client side, and I know that clients can nit nitpick work and as you say, water it down. But um, can you just talk a little bit more about resilience, what that means? Yeah, you know, it's interesting. So the way I've been using it thus far, I've meant, I meant you have an idea, it does, you don't, a client doesn't buy it, right? And you've got to, as a creative person, go back and come up with more, 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 more. So going into that, you have some creative people that the work will get worse. You know, mm. it'll just get worse. And you can say, you can blame it on the client. Oh, well, the client wouldn't buy it. Resilience is the, the ability to come back better. And it's a very rare talent, but um, so I'm, I was using resilience that way, but I think you, you know, now that you've mentioned it, it is actually quite broad, right? So it demands that for instance, if you're on the phone with clients and they are um, not liking it, or as you said, you know, um, picking it apart and your heart's broken, resilience means trying to take a deep breath and be smart and argue your points in a manner that's extremely respectful right? Rather than getting, you know, defensive, angry, mad. Uh, like there's so many different kinds of, of, of resilience. I mean, resilience is you have bad luck. Like luck and momentum play such a, a critical part of your, your career. You know, sometimes things just go your way and sometimes they don't. And if they don't and you're just experiencing a, a streak of, of bad luck, again, try to stay resilient and come back because the minute you can start shifting that momentum, I'm a huge believer that momentum is really important and you want to keep it going in the right way. Okay, super. So just as a follow on to that, um, do you think that agencies at times need to teach their clients how to innovate or think differently or, or be good partners? Uh, I know just many agencies have 
clients that really motivate them to do their best work and inspire them and others that um, tend to be more difficult. And I, I'm just curious if you feel that, you know, the agency plays a role in te almost teaching their, their clients how to be good clients to get the best work out of the agency. Yeah, you know, I think that um, I'm sure there is definitely a inspiring teaching uh, a facet to it. You know, I think first we need to realize that clients are under intense pressure to make their numbers. And, you know, uh, we have people on the agency side who went to the client side and came back and said, you know, I didn't fully comprehend the level of pressure on our clients to make their numbers and their jobs depend on it. So, so what that can lead to is, um, you know, to take a conservative route. You see the creative work, you see something that's a little more tried and true. And so, you know, maybe you're gonna take that sort of conservative route, which I would call the opposite of innovation. Uh, you know, as I think about it, it's well worked before, you know, but I think that what, what might seem safe is actually risky because you won't stand out. So um, I don't think we add people really teach clients, but I do think it's our job to present brilliant work, stand up for ideas. And that what we found is as we achieve success together, as we achieve success together, I'm sorry, um, our clients are inclined to take more innovative routes and trust more. So like, it's a really interesting thing. If you have a success together, then clients are more inspired to get excited by it and, and want to keep pushing the envelope the next time and the next time and the next time. Um, you know, there's, there's an uh, award in advertising, it's called the Effies. And the Effies are, um, they, they award the most effective advertising. So advertising that drives results. And our agency is, is the number one we're number one most effective agency in all of um, North America. And that's because our work works. So I think that when, while we don't like per se teach our clients, I think if we can do something that's highly successful, the next round, they're more inclined to trust us and trust us and trust us. And one thing that's very different from Terry and Sandy from many agencies is many of our clients go back 10 to 20 years. So we have a client that let's say she was our craft Oreo client 10 years ago, 15 years ago, I think actually. Then she went to, um, to, to Gerber Baby Food, put the business up for review and we won it. And she became our client um, now. I mean, she became our client and then now she's somewhere else and we're talking to her about working together again. So I think it's, 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 we say, um, you know, mutual success drives an innovative uh, a spirit to be innovative. No, that's very interesting. And when you say that you, you know, you're top of the list for most effective campaigns, it sounds to me like you really listen to your clients objectives, uh, because that's how you measure effectiveness. So it sounds like, you know, you're a good listener besides coming up with creative solutions, you really understand their business problems. You know, that, Absolutely. That, that, that's sort of what we, we really do pride ourselves on being brand stewards along with our clients. You know, I think we worked on Oreo for 10 years and I, I felt a great um, connection and responsibility for that brand in terms of its business success, you know, and, and that is, you know, that's not, not all creative people are wired that way. You know, Michelle, they, they aren't there, but, but we are, Terry and I are. And I think, it's why, you know, we're one of the only female owned, just right there, one of the, one of the only female owned ad age, successful ad agencies in New York and um, creatively run. So put that together. Those are two unusual qualities. And, and, and I do think we, we listen. Yeah, no, that's, it's really great. Um, is there any work that you'd like to share as that you're particularly proud of? I know I went over your creative reel and I was really, I thought it was fabulous work and just the range of clients, you know, from food to insurance, to, um, barber shops, you know, so many different sectors and yet the work is stand out in each of those. So I, I don't know if there's just a few examples that you'd like to share of where you innovated and maybe why it was so successful. Yeah, 
you know, I think, you know, obviously I mentioned corn cuts, you know, very, very different kind of campaign. I'm very proud of the work that we've done with our uh, Disney clients on reinventing the Disney princess franchise. So, so you say, okay, what's the Disney princess franchise? It's, it's, it's Cinderella, uh, Belle, Snow White, Rapunzel, Milan, Moana, all the great uh, Disney princesses that we know and love. Um, are, they're part of um, the Disney princess franchise. And so Disney came to us and uh, asked us to work with them to create a campaign to remind millennial moms that the Disney princesses aren't just about pretty dresses and sparkly tiaras, but they actually can be help us, they can be good role models for our daughter and inspires, you know, inspire them with their values. So if you had come to our agency at that time, you would have seen like almost every computer had a, a, a Disney princess movie on it. We were scouring through the movies to try to glean uh, sort of what's at the heart of the Disney princesses. And we launched, launched this campaign. Uh, it's called Dream Big Princess, which showcases the princesses as inspiring role models. So what we did was we looked into say Mulan and you know, she's very brave and she, she can encourage your daughter to be strong and courageous. And, Ariel inspires our girls to be explorers and Belle sees beyond the surface to see the beauty and the beast. Um, and of course, Anna and Elsa are very modern princesses and uh, they're natural leaders and they encourage our girls to step up and lead. So pulling out those scenes and reminding parents that, that the Disney princesses actually had they're teachable mo moments in those movies. And we're really proud to say that the campaign was showcased on a panel for gender equality in the Obama White House. So um, not exactly where you expect to see Cinderella, uh, but it's also just been an incredibly, um, yeah, really meaningful thing. Of course, it's meaningful to work on characters that are such icons and fixtures from our childhood. So. Uh, that's, that's a campaign I'm really proud of. Um, just as an aside, I, I think I may have told you this, but I started the princess collection toy line at Mattel. We were, the, that's amazing. Yeah. I, I also worked at Disney. I was in char charge of the Disney toy line worldwide for Mattel. And I was there when, um, when beauty and the beast started, um, little mermaid Pocahontas, uh, Hunchback of Notre Dame, all of those. And we just grew, we had so many princesses that we grouped them together, you know, in one collection of dolls and they were collectible, but they didn't have the social significance as, you know, they weren't as related to, um, you know, virtues in, in, in women or ideals. It wasn't as idealistic a toy line at the time, but it's interesting to see the evolution um, and the incorporation of brand purpose, which has become so important that people, brands are so much more conscious of it now than they were when I was there, which was a long time ago. Yeah, it, that's, that's great that you worked on that. Did I know that you did that? I can't remember if you ever told me that. I don't know. I don't know. But it's funny. So I, I hear everything you're saying. And I think you've taken it, you know, to the next evolution and to a more in a more meaningful direction, which I, I think is really terrific. Um, so has the way you've um, developed great work evolved? Um, media has gotten so fragmented. There's so many different target personas. Just, I'm just curious over the years, if you feel that um, the, the way you develop the big idea has changed. There's a lot more messaging now than there used to be. Yeah. Uh, just curious if you're, you're working differently and evolving that. You know, because of the fragmented media landscape, we feel more than ever, you need that big idea. So what's the one campaign platform that's going to connect everything from your TV spot, to your, twi your tweet, to your social posts, to your, um, you know, in-store signage. What, when the consumer sees you, how are you on brand? So that big idea is really important. What's, what's different about it now, I think, is how many, how many channels it needs to ignite. You know, I think, I think when we were growing up in the business, it was, of course, at the time you didn't know it, but it was simpler because you know, you had TV, you had radio, you had outdoor, you had print. And yeah, of course you had in-store, but 
that was the that was it now you have all that plus you go to you know all the social channels such as facebook instagram twitter tiktok they all have best practices they all have ways to operate you know and then of course you have things like branded content um, you have all kinds of new media digital options you know you have banners you have so it's like the big idea needs to stretch more, I would say, than it used to have to. So you really have to sit down and go, is this an idea that I can see executing in all these channels? And then I also do think you need to give yourself a little flexibility on that. So we say we're not a after matching luggage, which just means we don't want to just take our TV spot and put it online, right? Or take the words and put it in a radio spot. We want to take the idea that's at the heart of it and execute it best for that medium. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, um, and then do you use technology at all to, to innovate or do you think that like, has the process changed in terms of testing ideas among consumers? Or is there any way just from a technology standpoint, we hear so much about digital everything and online research and so many different, different aspects of technology um, or any other, any, things coming into play now? Or do you feel that the process of creating a, a really big campaign idea, besides what you explained, which I think is, is a great perspective that the idea needs to stretch and it needs to be um, play across more different types of, of channels and outlets. But are there are anything, um, any other major ways that the process of innovating has changed? Yeah, you know, I think probably like in our general lives, technology has changed everything about everything. Um, you know, so, and, and, and technology is, is changing so rapidly. You know, like when you, you, you try to, you know, learn about advertising on Facebook or Twitter or Instagram and best practices are evolving every day. There's a new feature, you know, there's Facebook, but then there's Facebook um, uh, stories, stories, um, you know, all different aspects. And um, so since we're always trying to serve up our ideas in the most fresh, engaging ways, we always need to keep up with everything that's changing. You know, the idea will rule, but we need to be sure we deliver it um, in ways that technology helps us. So here's an interesting example of something recently that we leverage technology. Um, so for Twining's Tea, uh, so Twining's is one of the oldest brands we've ever worked on. It's hundred years old. It, um, it, was, it, it, it was invented by Thomas Twining's in a London tea house in 1706 or something, something like that. It'll come to me in a minute. So, um, so when the pandemic hit, more consumers started to buy their tea at twinings.com or Amazon because people weren't going to stores. So we're like, that's interesting. What can we do to build a relationship with these people to, you know, kind of forge brand love and, you know, tracking, we track our items, right? And tracking the tracking system, I would have to believe that it's the most boring thing in the world, right? You push, where is it? It comes, you have no relationship to the brand or to the site or to anything. You just track it. So it's rote and boring. So what we decided to do is to bring some of the magic of the Twinings brand to the ex experience of buying it. So when someone bought Twinings tea online, you could track your package from the original Twinings tea house in London from 1706 to your door. So you would receive email, you know, email updates that were really funny and entertaining saying, your package is now on a ship selling the seas in 1706. Then the next email, you know, uh, your package is, uh, you know, on a uh, scooter going from here. It was, it was all these different periods of time where you could track your package till it landed on your door. So, um, well, that's we got, that's we, really got, cool. yeah. Yeah, we got the most incredible flood of comments from people who were locked in their houses with nowhere to go who thought it was really funny and really entertaining. It was a very small thing, but it was innovative. No one had ever used tracking like that. Oh, I love it. I think it's great. It's really great. Sandy, what makes a great client that encourages your agency to do the best work for them? You know, I think at heart, the best clients 
love great advertising and feel great joy in creative in creating innovative work. You know, to these clients, um, and the, and they're probably you know the most respected CMOs in the world. Um, they passionately advocate for advertising that entertains, educates, inspires. You know, the contrasting type of of client would be just wanting something that drives your business. I think, yes, that we absolutely need work that drives your business. And you don't want it to be, um, it, it, it won't be good enough if it entertains or educates or inspires if it doesn't drive business. We're all out to drive business results. But if you can do more than just put something out there that people would rather skip, but will, you know, people will be engaged with, talk about, that to me is the definition of a, a, of a great client, somebody who really has a heart and gets excited like we do about great work. I also think a great client is extremely respectful and listens. You know, a great client doesn't always agree with you or do what you want them to do, but a great client should respect you enough to listen and think that you probably have a very good point that's worth thinking about. So I'd call that respect. And then I think there's also something, you know, Tony Scopolito, who's our managing director, talks about this a lot, which is really getting down to a great client is someone that's that that does it, that that's there for you even in bad times. So a bit of a challenge happens, a snag on the business, something that you do together doesn't work out right. They don't start, you know, abandoning you, trashing you, firing you, beating you up. Um, but they, they sort of share in, um, in, in the responsibility for what went wrong, but also in the encouragement uh, to do something right and sort of inspire and push you to do better. And, uh, you know, it's just too easy. It's really too easy for a client, you know, who I've described is they're under a, a great deal of pressure. So things don't go wrong. It could be easy to, to sort of beat you up for it, but okay. You know who those clients are, right? You know who they are and you're not necessarily going to make it through 10 or 20 years because it's kind of like in life, right? Not, nothing's perfect. Nothing's, nothing's, um, you know, sailing perfectly at every moment. Um, you want you want your agency to be impeccable and good and smart, but they're not going to be perfect. So you're going to hit some bumps in the road. And I do think a, cl a good client is loyal. No, that's great. So it's real. It's a real partnership where you respect each other um, and you prop each other up and you uh, sort of share responsibility. Yes, it's a shared partnership. Mm -hmm. That's great. Uh, so my last question for you is. How has COVID uh, and working more remotely affected the way you brainstorm within your agency and work with your clients? Yeah, so COVID has been, it's been a huge adjustment to say the least for the world. You know, um, we at Terry and Sandy are very lucky. And every time I say it, I knock on wood and feel very, very grateful to report that we have been flourishing despite COVID. Um, you know, we, we have a very driven, motivated team and we found new ways to work together. Um, but beyond that, where we're lucky as, as an agency, we're in sectors that have been fortunate to do well during COVID. So for instance, we're in a lot of packaged goods uh, businesses, those Nutella, Twinings, those brands are doing well, by the way, in food brands, right? You know, doing very well. Um, we're, we're in some healthcare, healthcare doing very well. We're very fortunate that we're not in travel. You know, we don't have any travel. So if we had a, if we had a giant cruise ship or Travelocity or all those companies, hotel chain, um, there, you know, restaurant chains, they've been, you know, really hit hard. And if you were an agency that had those clients, um, you would be hit hard. There'd be no way around it. It just is what it is, right? Right. So we've been lucky to be in the right um, sectors. And then we, we really, I, I would say we believe, Terry and I really believe that Zoom has, Zoom or whatever video conference platform you're on, because many of our clients use different ones like Microsoft, 
um, it saved us. I firmly believe that if we had, if we were doing, trying to do conference calls as a company, I think we would have failed. I think that, that, you know, we still do have brainstorms with a bunch of people and we do it via zoom. Is it as good as in person? No. Is it as fun as in person? No, because you're not telling as many jokes or just, you know, t stopping for your lunch and all that stuff, but it works. So um, we, you know, and our creative people, hats off to them because they're, you know, they're the people every day that are coming up with ideas together. So far, folks have found ways to make it work. Uh, folks are starting to go into the office a little bit. Uh, we're not open, but if people want to go in, they can. You know, and I think we all miss the collaborative spirit of being in the office. We miss the fun. We miss dinners with clients and I'll tell you what we really miss is producing work. Like, you know, when we produce TV or videos, we're used to going to shoots in person and being right beside the director and being involved in the casting and all that's done remote now. We have to zoom into shoots. Wow. So yeah. it's, it's it, I would say a slight compromise, but we've managed to make it work. Yeah, yeah. I think so many businesses are surprising themselves. They're, they're, I, I know I've been teaching online and I never thought it would work well and I actually love it. It's, it's turned out to be, to be great, but it's, it's an adjustment and you surprise yourself. Um, and to some, some, some of it will go back, I think, to the way it was before, but some of it will stick. So I, I think we've all found new ways of working, but anyway, so for the audience, if they would like to look at more of your work, um, find out more about the agency and some probably you have some ads on your website as well. Um, just go to Terry Sandy, T-E-R-R-I-S-A-N-D-Y.com. And just um, any parting words regarding thoughts or advice for brands on, we talked a lot about this, but just kind of, you were going to summarize your key bits of advice on how to get great work that'll resonate with consumers. Just well, any party thoughts. I was more thinking, Michelle, yeah. about innovation and the connection to creativity. Because when you originally talked to me and you were working on, you know, doing a lot of work in the innovation space and you came and talked to me, I was sort of like, but, you know, I'm not really an innovator. I'm a creative person. And the longer I've, I've thought about it, the more I see the incredible connection between innovation and creativity. And the fact that, you know, great creative is, innovative and fresh and original. And I think anybody that's exposed to great creative idea smiles, you know, or thinks, oh, that's just so fresh and good. And, you know, I was thinking about Steve Jobs, who is such a merging of innovate, innovative, you know, and creative, because here he was this, you know, genius in innovation, right? Changed the world. Oh my God, changed more sectors than anybody that has ever come before him. But he also loved creativity. He loved great work, great advertising and great communication. And he, um, he demanded it and he fought for it. You know, so there really is much more of a connection than I got at first between creativity and innovation. Right, oh, definitely, definitely. Anyway, this was really awesome. Thank you so much. And I'm gonna keep watching your work, but I think it's been phenomenal. And I like seeing uh, successful women. You're one of the few female owned agencies that, that I've seen um, who's really done incredibly well. And I think it's because of, you know, your, your view of life, your view of teamwork, um, positive attitude, um, you know, just there's so many, your empathy, you know, listening to clients, reframing their, their problems. I think there's so many things that you've talked about that have gone into making um, Carrie and Sandy such a successful agency. So thank you. This was really wonderful and appreciate your time. Thank you, Michelle. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.